guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Fucks Given Crew. Sherry here. How's it going? So I'm pretty stoked about a couple of things here. So I got my little deck in. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly the same size as the original deck. I went and stuck them on the wall. I don't know how long I'm going to keep those up there like that, but I figure I don't need to use them anymore since I have these guys. Uh, and the other thing is I finished my book. Yeah. So I've locked myself in the room, my room for the past three weeks to get this thing done. It's actually you know, a lot bigger than it looks because my font is actually quite small. I'm just realizing that um, as I'm looking through it. But anyway, yeah, that's done. Oh, hold on one sec. I just dropped some cards. They're really slippery. Just a minute. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so yeah. Um, so this is the handbook for my cards. Um, it's 113 pages long now, and it keeps going up. I'm adding, um, I need to add uh, um, a couple of types of readings um, and a couple more descriptive things about the tarot cards, and then I should be able to, I guess, send it to a publisher, but um, I still need to have uh, an editor look at it. Anyway, um, so this is going to be a Twin Flame reading for January uh, the 23rd, which is today, until February the 3rd. Uh, so scary, last night um, we had a tsunami, a tsunami warning. Um, so yeah, we were awakened to that at 2 o'clock in the morning, and um, so we had to evacuate, of course, so it was pretty scary. Um, Alaska had, an, well, it was saying 8.2 last night, but they've reduced it to 7.9. So that's, yeah. So we were waiting for the wave to come. So, you know, life is short, right? Um, live it to the fullest. That's all I got to say about that. All right. So um, I think what I'm going to do is obviously a twin flame reading. Um, so let me just go ahead. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and pull the cards um, first and then we'll go through the positions. I want to try and keep it nice and short. If you're waiting for um, a reading, my apologies. I really needed to get the, the book done. So um, I've been working on readings all day today um, and then I'm going to be working on them again tomorrow. I'm working uh, as a hygienist on Thursday and Friday, <clears throat> so I won't be doing any readings then. And then, of course, I'll get back to it again on, uh, on the weekend. So my apologies. I know that some of you guys have been waiting for quite a while. But there's some things I really needed to take care of. Um, yeah. So th I thank you for your patience. And, yeah, I love you guys. All right, let's begin. So beginning with the feminine's past position. So we got the knight of, of swords. Masculine is two of swords. Present for the feminine, five of cups. Present, or present for the masculine is the three of swords. Near future, feminine is the ten of wands. Let me actually just move these over a little bit. Are you able to see those? Okay. Um, near future for the masculine, ten of swords. Final come, five of wands. Permit. So, what's the feminine bringing into the reading? The devil and the masculine. Nine of fire. Um, foundation. Eight of wands. And the crowning. Destiny. Very nice. And at the heart is the queen of pentacles. And the bottom of the deck. Transformation. Metamorphosis. Okay, so the bottom of the, d the deck is the death card. 
major transformation metamorphosis. So um, both aspects are going to be feeling this energy for the next, you know, 11 days. Um, so this is death of the ego, death of your old identity. So it's cutting away things that no longer serve you. Um, and it usually has a lot to do with, you know, emotions, because this is a, an emotion card. Um, but it's also attachments that you have to things in the 3D reality as well. So this is the um, caterpillar turning into the butterfly, right? So in order for you to move forward, um, your old life needs to be cut away. So that's a major transformation is what's going to be happening here in the coming week. Okay, so for the feminine side, past position, Knight of Swords. So the Knight of Swords is like a gust of wind coming in very suddenly. It rustles things up, um, scatters things around. So like the wind, it's, it's all over the place, right? So there's no real direction, um, but it is movement forward. So the feminine may um, be pursuing or was pursuing um, an idea she didn't know you know where it was taking her or you know she was kind of jumping in feet first without um, checking to see if things were you know not necessarily dangerous this knight has a tendency just to rush in right rather than you know planning right so he ends up getting himself in a lot of difficulties as a result of it so even though and it could, it could also represent, you know, the knight is a champion. He fights for truth and justice. So maybe the feminine um, discovered some truths about herself or about the masculine. Um, and this is also a card of communication. So there may have been some communication. But, you know, like I said, it's real scattered energy. Um, so the pres or sorry, the past position for the masculine is the two of swords. So this is indecision, mental um, conflicts, it's schizophrenia, split mind. So this is having two choices, uh, both have far-reaching consequences. Uh, so he was unable to decide what he wanted to do. And as a result, it has um, progressed into the three swords in his present position. The feminine is also in a very mourning, sad kind of energy in the present as well. But that will be coming to an end. Uh, so the Two of Swords is just not knowing what to do. You know, how do I, how do I make this decision? It's going to affect other people in my life. Um, even though I want to do this, I want to be happy. Um, I can't, right? So it is, you know, very similar energy <clears throat> to the Eight of Swords, that self-imposed prison of the mind. So the masculine hasn't been able to make any decisions. Present position for the feminine is the Five of Cups. So this is deep mourning, deep pain as a result of a loss. Um, so this happens when you've attached yourself to an outcome, to a person, to a thing, and they leave and you're, you're destroyed. So for a lot of feminines, um, you know, they may be experiencing a lot of sadness and maybe regret uh, that things didn't turn out the way that you had hoped. Um, you might have had to leave a situation that you know that you you place a lot of importance on, right? So this is an emotional card, right? So feel those emotions. Um, tears are like healing rain. So I'm going to pull one clarifier. So there may have been some communication that, or some type of movement forward that may have caused the feminine to feel sadness at the moment. Um, please give us a clarifier. What do you mean by the Five of Cups there? It is true love. So this, the sadness would be coming, I guess, from a separation. The, the Knight of Swords <clears throat> uses a sword to cut away barriers, to cut things away. And remember that the overall energy is the death card, which is endings, right? So the feminine may be feeling 
a disconnect and um, reflecting on that disconnect, thinking about how much she loves the masculine um, and sad that he's not in her life, right? This, and or, you know, maybe a situation is keeping her from being with her true love. Okay, so are you able to see those? I don't want to move them too far. Present position for the masculine, three swords, heartbreak. Now sword, he's mostly in the swords energy. The feminine um, is wand, a lot of fire, right? Because the knight of, of uh, air is a fire energy. All, all knights are fire. So it's a movement forward, very windy, very fiery very chaotic um then we got an emotional card and then we got two more wands which i'll get to in a moment so three of swords mental um mental you know it's thoughts that have broken the masculine's heart and as i was mentioning earlier we have the two progressing to the three so because you weren't able to make a decision um you know, make that choice for yourself, it has brought you some heartache and pain into your life in the present moment. So I'm just going to pull one card here as a clarifier. What do you mean by the Three of Swords? What, where's this pain coming from? Because he's a wounded warrior in terms of this connection. Now, at the foundation, we have communication, the Eight of Wands. There's that accelerated motion. It's uh, texting, phone calls, Cupid's arrows. So there's love exchange or vibration that the two aspects are sharing. But in terms of how they're both dealing with things, it's a very um, low period of time. But like I said, it's coming to an end. What do you mean by the Three of Swords, please? Um, immoral people. I can't really read this. Sorry, you guys. It's the lighting really sucks. And plus, I, th I think I need some bifocals. I swear to God. Um, causing harm. Scapegoat. So, wow. Can you believe that? So, immoral people are hurting him. Um, you know, somebody's causing him, you know, pain and harm and, and feeling betrayed and, um, and it's like he wants to leave, he wants to escape that pain, but he feels bound on some level and it's all mental. He's believing that he is not free. Near future for the mat our feminine is the Ten of Wands. So that's awesome. It is an ending. Um, you both got tens. He got the Ten of Swords, interestingly enough. Um, and you got the Ten, or the feminine got the Ten of Wands. So, like I said, a lot of wand energy. So there's, you know, wand is spirituality. It is passion, creativity, your desires, um, the thing that drives you forward. Um, but it, it's a lot of creative energy. Now, the Ten of Wands is feeling exhausted, um, feeling burdened, feeling like you are carrying everything on your shoulders. So the Ten means a completion and end to that. Now, the masculine is bringing in the Nine of Wands. Um, so we got the nine, you know, and a progression in the ethereal energy of a completion, you know, in terms of the wand energy. Ooh, I'm kind of on a high alert right now. I felt a vibration just now. I thought maybe it might have been an earthquake. There's a lot of aftershocks right now in Alaska. So, um, yeah, the 10 of wands. Uh, so this is, you know, it's an explosive ending it, and it, it's an ending because of exhaustion. You were unable to put the burden down on your own and as a result you basically collapsed in exhaustion. This, 
this break or this ending was forced upon you. So this isn't, you know, feeling like I can't sleep. You know, you're looking at that alarm clock. You're dreading waking up the next morning. So just know that is ending in the near future. Masculine got the Ten of Swords. So the Ten of Swords is the end to the dark night of the soul. Wow. So that's how much anguish and pain and you know, being lost in the mind that he is. It's, uh, you know, this is feeling stabbed in the back ten times and left for dead, or for dead by immoral people, scapegoats, people that want to do him harm, basically feeling of being attacked mentally and betrayed, you know, so this is the end to it, and that's that's beautiful, um, because we see him not only putting an end to this kind of energy in his life, but also he's he's going on a he's detaching from the material world. He is finding solitude, and the solitude is is not to withdraw from people, not to avoid people. But it's to come to some, you know, truths or answers within yourself. So it's seeking solitude, being alone and enjoying that aloneness. And in that solitude, you discover the answers that you're seeking. So this is a major arcana. And so that means that it has a, a very heavy energy, a very heavy weight in his reading. And so that's beautiful to see him going through this indecisiveness, this heartbreak, it ending. Remember, the death card is then ending as well. You see that cutting away here. Um, and so this is also another cutting away, detaching from the 3D reality. Away from, you're moving away from the conditioning, you're away, moving away from the stories. You know, there's nothing in the 3D reality that give, gives you pleasure anymore. Um, you see through the illusion. You become the philosopher. You're looking for deeper answers, deeper meaning in life. So the hermit discovers or finds his own light within, and then he comes out of solitude to share his wisdom with others. So now, what is the feminine bringing into the reading of the devil? So the devil card is the ego. This is self-limiting beliefs. This is just negative thinking, negative thoughts, whispers in the air, telling you you're not good enough, you don't have enough. You know, you're, you need to pursue material abundance in order to feel happy. Um, this may be an addiction, you know, drowning your sorrows and with alcohol or some other form of addiction. It's an escape type of energy. Now, the, 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 uh, the devil is the scapegoat. So, this is what she's bringing into the union, is the devil, the ego. And remember the word over here, scapegoat, right? It's kind of a weird energy. So maybe something's happening in the present moment that is causing the masculine pain. And she may be seeing through that ego, seeing through the facade. Um, so I'm just going to pull one card for that. What do you mean by the ego, please, spirit? What do you mean by the ego? Make a wish. Okay. So I'll give you a moment to think about that. Um, to, you know, um, wish upon a star at this moment. What would you most desire um, in your life? Right? And so I'll give you a second to think about it. Send that intention out. Okay, so what do you mean? Time together. So 
over here, you know, she's mourning the loss of her love. What she's bringing into the union is a desire to be together, feel unconditional love. Um, it's happy news, emotional beginnings, births, weddings, an overflow of love. Right? So this is like an ace of cups kind of energy. So the ego may be causing conflict with the feminine or she is seeing through something. She's desiring time together. She wants this new beginning. She wants her true love for the love of her life. Um, so yeah, okay. So what is masculine bringing in the nine of fire, nine of wands? I mentioned earlier, we got the 10 in the near future. So this could, you know, be an energy or vibration that the feminine is picking up on. Um, and she disconnects or he does and it gives her relief. Um, but anyway, the Nine of Wands is the Wounded Warrior. So this is feeling beaten up, beaten down, being knocked around, but getting back up and fighting for what you want. Um, you know, just digging down deep for that last little bit of energy and giving it a final push. So in terms of this connection, the masculine is feeling exhausting feeling you know that he's put a lot of work and effort into manifesting things in his life um, and you know this card also talks about wanting to manifest success or abundance in your life um, and you've risen to the top and then you realize once you get up there that you need to maintain this energy in order to stay on top so the 10 is going, fuck that. I've had enough. My body can't handle it. My mind can't handle it. My spirit can't handle it. So the masculine is getting to that point, nearing the completion of that. And, um, but it, this is what he's bringing into the union. So remember also that the eight of wands is at a foundation. So that's accelerated motion. There was a lot of activity in the past. And so it's like there's this culmination this climatic point you know that is and it seems to have to do with you know maybe getting together in the 3d reality or coming together or making a connection in the 3d I don't know so I'm gonna pull one card for the nine what do you mean by the nine please spirit Okay, so this is kind of like the Two of Swords card again. Split mind. What else did I see? Split mind. Um, mental conflict. Crossroads. Yeah. A stalemate. So it's this same energy. Two of Swords. Indecisiveness. You know, feeling like you're about to to reach across the finish line um, but at the last minute you stop dead in your tracks just before you hit that finish line it's kind of like what I'm feeling here so in terms of this union the masculine is you know that you know it's that last little sprint before the finish line Okay, so Foundation Eight of Wands, communication. So in this picture, somebody's texting, right? So it's air. It's um, energy moving through the air, like arrows. And it's very directed energy. And um, it's very fiery. So it's an explosive thrust forward. It's like somebody stepping on the gas. You see the finish line. It's there. And so, you know, you, you start to speed up, basically. So there may have been, oh, I was saying to myself that if one of the cards happened to fall off the wall, I'll just include it as part of the reading. So the 
Divine Masculine card was coming off. So this is, um, you know, the Divine Masculine the Twin Flame. Uh, this is somebody who's very powerful, who is, um, they're very, they know who they are. Um, and they don't compromise themselves. You know, there's this major sense of authenticity with this card. And from that authenticity comes this grounded paternal father masculine, um, you know, grounded net energy. But this is also taking action, moving forward, you know, Yin, or sorry, Yang is um, extroverted while Yin is introverted, receptivity, this is movement forward. So what I'm really feeling like with this is, especially when it fell down with the Eight of Wands, is maybe the masculine is taking action or has taken action, has maybe communicated his truth. He feels that maybe he's made some decisions about something and he wants to communicate that or he wants to move forward. This is an increase in positive energy. Okay. Um, stay. So at the crowning we have Destiny, the Wheel of Fortune card. So this is a shift, right? This is a completion of a cycle. So if you're going through a period of hard hardship, you know, financial hardship or um, just a vibration, bad karmic energy, this card is saying that it's going to change now, that good luck, good fortune is coming back to you. But this is also destiny. So this is crowning. This is what they both want. They both want to surrender to destiny, to... They both want that karmic wheel to turn in their favor. They're both waiting for the end of a difficult cycle. We got three tens here all in a row. But this is a hopeful card as well. You know, since this is their crowning energy, they feel that they're kind of you know, this is what was meant to be, right? It's, there's kind of a surrender and a divine guiding kind of energy associated with it. So yeah, it's beautiful. At the heart is the queen of pentacles, queen of earth. So I think I'm gonna pull two additional cards, what do I do with them? So I'm gonna pull one for the masculine and one for the feminine. Just as clarifiers, the Queen of Pentacles is somebody who is very successful in the 3D reality. They are a mother, so they not only will they work a full-time job and be, you know, um, a supporter financially to the family, but they also keep the home nice and clean. You know, the, the supper on the table. They look after their children. Um, but they also share their abundance. They, they spread their wealth, their abundance for all. They're very open, very giving. So as a shared energy at the heart, we have that openness. The Queen of Earth is also the 3D reality, right? So this could be um, a connection or bumping into each other or a desire to bump into each other in the 3D. We have like this major ending of pain here and then a de detachment and he's already discovered who he is, his truth, and there, oh, another one's falling down. So the three of wands wants to fall down. I'm just going to let it fall. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's hilarious. So the three of wands is um, a thumbs up from the universe. You're on the right track. So as that was following, I was talking about the Divine Masculine card here, the Emperor, and how he's finding his truth, his 
groundedness within his own knowing. Do you know what I mean? He's um, he's discovering this power within him. Um, and it's also wand, like wand energy. It's fire, right? So what was I doing? Oh yeah, I'm pulling two cards for clarifiers. One for the feminine first, justice, the masculine. Wow, I praise. Bam. Okay, so uh, two major arcana is here. So the justice card is karmic energy coming back to you. So we see if this is being uh, represented as a feminine, she's giving her seeds. She's she's being open. She's sharing. She's giving of herself um, in the 3D, and as a result, it's coming back to her. You know, good luck, good fortune coming back. And here we got more karmic energy. So the karmic it, is uh, balance justice is served so she there's this sense of her knowing her truth discovering some truths and being a very positive vibration karmically but we don't really see that with this you know these cards here we don't really see that maybe she's hoping for justice she wants justice now, the Hierophant is also an earth energy as well, and that's what the masculine is bringing in. So the High Priest is somebody who's a spiritual leader. So their crown chakras are open. They're, you know, they're connected to Source. They're downloading this, this wisdom, and then they share it with others. So this could mean that either he's becoming a spiritual leader or he's connecting with a tribe of people that uh, are encouraging him um, you know, connecting with like-minded people, or, you know, at the heart, there's this, again, a groundedness, a truth in his, at the core of who he is, there's this, he's awakening spiritually, and just all around, that's, that's awesome, that's beautiful, so, Yeah, I usually don't read the cards like this. I usually like to keep them um, a surprise. Oh, shit. We forgot to do this one, didn't we? Okay, the Five of Wands as the final outcome for the feminine is um, overcoming obstacles. Um, there are things standing in your way. So these are challenges, right? But you don't feel that you're competent enough to overcome these challenges. You don't feel like you, you're good enough or you have the strength to do it, to compete. You know, this is challenging energy. So this is what the feminine is going to be feeling as a final outcome. So I'm just going to pull from the top here. Laziness or take for granted. Complacency. Um, so this could be, again, kind of feeling like I give up. Um, laziness. Unwilling to move is almost what I'm feeling. It's like she's like giving the thumbs down. Whereas over there, the thumbs up was being shown. So turn the thumb upside down, girls. Um, whatever this challenge is in your way, don't be complacent don't give up don't you know or don't judge if you you're you know if you feel somebody's being lazy taking you for granted and you're having these emotions within yourself and you start to feel bitter about it those are all your projections those are all things that are happening within you it has nothing to do with the external environment this is all an internal war Right, so that's what needs to be cut away. So the death card is death of the ego. Yes, do that. You know, you you want your wish to come true, right? You want time together, you want your true love. But there's a chain, a codependent relationship, an addiction, something is stopping you. And the masculine is putting effort forth, but there's a sense that he needs to stay on top. He's fighting to stay on top. And then um, 
he's going to cut the chain to something. All right, so let's pull two cards from Miss and Mermaids, her final message from the universe. Stop. The feminine sea chariot. Masculine is my tentacled friend. Yeah, feeling extended. Well, you both feel that way, really. Oops, where is my book? Oh, it's over there. Just a minute, i got to pause it. Okay, so the sea chariot. Once I rode a passive babe at the mercy of those around me, a defenseless child with demeanor so mild as to encourage complacency. There's that complacency again. Remember it was mentioned up here, laziness, complacency. Yet, as time passed by, I endeavored to try a temperament more becoming. So I grabbed the reins, and I've made great gains as a charioteer commanding. A white-haired beauty rides upon a chariot pulled by curious fishes. She is optimistic, in control, and the captain of her destiny. Though young and inexperienced, she is prepared to take command and forge her own path. So the meaning is to assert control. So the universe is telling you to assert control. It is time for you to assert control. You have, you have, give, you have given the reins over to others in too many areas of your life, and it is time to grab them back. Take stock of all arenas in your life, your profession, personal relationships, monetary considerations, group associations and home obligations. Again, pointing to that Queen of Pentacles kind of feeling. Determine where you are dissatisfied with your level of involvement and make a plan to take it back, to take back control. It is perfectly acceptable and desirable to trust others to help you with some aspects of your life, but it is up to you and you alone to make sure this help does not turn into dependence. You are the sole captain of your ship. You need to be at the helm when and where it matters the most. Okay, so you've given over the reins to somebody else for too long. Codependent relationship, addiction, karmic partner, self-limiting beliefs. Take them back. Take control of your life again. Right, and overcome those barriers you've been complacent for too long it's time to take control what it is that you want you want your true love make that wish and make make it happen you know uh, spirit is saying go forward move forward okay so number 34 Okay, my tentacled friend. I am extended in eight directions, torn and pulled beyond the max. I have thumbs in too many puddings and must withdraw, renew, and relax. An exhausted sea maiden holds on limply to her octopus companion. Again, limply, right? That exhausted, um, wounded warrior. Uh, in the Ten of Swords, same thing. She is overexhausted, tired, and in need of rest, revitalization, or rebirth. Her paler suggests depleted energy and waning vigor. So the meaning is reclaim your overextended self. So again, similar energy as um, the, the feminine over there. Reclaim yourself. Take your power back. You've become overextended like an octopus who has stretched each arm in different directions. The overextension has left you weak, vulnerable, and haggard. It is time to reduce your obligations and draw inward for a time. Again, <clears throat> pointing to the, the Hermit Solitude card. Decide upon your highest priorities and release those duties that no longer aid you. The Death card, Ten of Swords, cut those things out of your life. Nine of Wands. Reclaim the parts of yourself, both mentally and physically, that are being improperly used and let them rest for a time. So again, mentally, physically, right? He's in that mental place and physically. Um, when you're feeling stronger, put them back to use constructively. 
if you see the need, but do not let yourself get so overburdened again. Always keep an arm in reserve for a surprise attack or surprise task that is near and dear to your heart or fuels your personal ambition. So pr pursue those things that make you feel authentic, that you're living your truth, right? You know, this could be helping others, guiding others out of the darkness. You finding your power, your light within. This is a very dark time. So reclaim those lost aspects of yourself. Make a decision. Whatever it is that you're holding back on, take action on that. Move forward. The Queen of, One, of Pentacles is also a manifestation card as well into the 3D reality. So it's, it seems to me the feminine's waiting for something to happen. She's getting bitter, perhaps. Um, those things need to be cut away and you need to take control and move forward. On the masculine side, he feels overextended. He feels, you know, there's this energy that is holding him back, holding him down, hurting his heart. And he also detaches from that. You know, you're, you're both cutting away things leaving the, pa the past behind and you're both being asked to pursue the things that you desire to take back control of your life all right so i do hope this helped and sending so much love your way all right peace